Are you a big man? Huh? I'm talking to you. What? You wake up in the morning, you say, I'm my big boy pants. Look, I'm wearing a belt. I got big boy pants on. That's right, New York Giants fans. This is Tim with the Online Big Blue bringing you the best of New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And we always have our big boy pants on. Today, I wanted to talk about some Giants who are on this current roster who need to get their big boy pants on, who need to have a make or break season who need to be something that they have been probably haven't been or may never have been and improve going into 2021, excuse me, 2022 and improve off their 2021 season and maybe even improve off their entire giant career or lack thereof giant career. Now, I thought it'd be fun if I just did this off the roster. Now, I'm typing in Giants roster right now, and I'm going to go to the Giants homepage as we speak, and I'm going to pull up the complete Giants roster, and we're going to go through this one by one, step by step, and see exactly who needs to move, who needs to move on, and who needs to step it up, and who needs to put their big boy pants on. We're going to run through this roster, you know, we're, we're, we're just going to do it by the numbers. We're going to start from two and go all the way down. So starting with the Sterling Shepard, evidently number three, third on the giant roster. Injuries have, have derailed this kid's career. 29 years old, seven years out of Oklahoma, 6'10", 169 pounds. Coming off the injury, uh, coming off another injury. Does he have to put his big boy pants on? No, he's got to change his injury pants. He's got to take off the injury pants and put on, I have to play at least 14 games this year because you may not, he may not even make it out of training camp because of the injury. I wouldn't be shocked if he was, uh, if he was an injury wave towards the middle of camp, towards the end of camp. We have to wait and see number going, jumping out and now we're dropping down the roster. Uh, the player that really needs to get those big boy pants on. And of course that's number eight, six, five, 230 pounds. His fourth year out of Duke, Daniel Jones. We've talked about Daniel Jones ad nauseum. So we're not gonna we're not gonna discuss what he needs to do. Because I think we all know what he needs to do. But he is he is big boy pant candidate number dos number two. Keep going down the roster. We hit number 19, Kenny Gallo. Oh, I'm not gonna even say his name because you know what? We always say the smooth sounds of Kenny G. I was gonna I was gonna say his full name, but he is the smooth sounds of Kenny G. Oh, uh, you give a kid $72 million to be? Bringing you the smooth sounds of Kenny G. $72 million. Not worth it, as you can plainly see. The big wide receiver ever, Northern Iowa. Nor- Northern Illinois, excuse me. Um, there was no tear shed when he left the Lions. I think the Lions knew what he was. 6'4", 213 pounds. Does not have elite speed. Is known for the contested catch, but his catch percentage isn't even very high when it's not contested. He needs his big boy pants on. He needs to turn the corner. He needs to look it up and say, you know what? Not only do I have my big boy pants on, I got my big boy shirt on. Going down the roster again, we got number 20, Julian Love. Uh, Another candidate. He got benched last year. Only came back via injury and played the slot. Been with the team for four years out of Notre Dame, 5'11", 195 pounds, 24 years old safety. His versatility may save him on this roster because of a lack of depth at safety and potential issues at corner. But he needs to play well. He needs to step it up. He needs to be big time in year number four. He needs to be big time. And it's funny because I, I look right under Julian Love. And this is probably unfair, but Yusef Corker out of Kentucky, the rookie, six feet, 197 pounds. He's another one's got to get his big boy pants on. Why? Because so much is expected of him. Fair or unfair, so much is expected of this kid to come in and potentially start as an undrafted free agent. We have no idea what he has. We have no idea if he has... We don't know. We just don't know yet. But on this roster, he's expe- there's a lot expected out of him. The next one on our list is going to be a Dory Jackson. <sighs> Numbers 22, six year out of USC, 5'11", 185 pounds. Stepping into that CB1 spot, stepping in and take over James Bradbury. 
he's got to, he's got to step up big because of certain reasons because of the fact that we got rid of uh, we got rid of James Bradbury. And I feel bad for him because by default, he's going to move into the CB1 position. Good or bad, right or wrong or indifferent, he's going to have to move into that position. He's going to have to play well. He is going to have to stand out. He's he's just going to have to. By hook or by crook, he's the guy that's going to lead this secondary. We're only up to, we're only into the 20s. Number 26, Saquon Barkley. Going to be his fifth year at Penn State. The running back, six feet, 232 pounds, 25 years old. We all know what Barkley needs to do. Barkley needs to go, you know, Barkley needs to go back to what he was. Barkley needs to, to find that magic. Barkley needs to just move on from these last two seasons and step back into his rookie season. Like we always like to say, Barkley. Certain magic still lingers in the name. Memories of the 2019 season in the ice and snow. I had to do my John Facenda there. Uh, but Bar- we all know Barkley's got to step it up. He's got he's to be double big boy pants. Now we're going to go down the list. I keep going down this list a little bit more. Uh, I like doing this live. I wish I, I should have did this as a live stream. Uh, two people right back to back, 47 and 48, who need to get their big boy pants really on. Cam Brown and Tate Crowder. Cam Brown, 5'6", excuse me, 6'5", 233 pounds, close out of Penn State. This is going to be his third season. Hasn't really shown much outside of special teams. Tay Crowder is the undersized middle linebacker, 6'1", 235, a little bit slow. Not, I, I don't think his sense is there at times. Uh, his football sense, I should say. Um, on a on a On a team with a decent roster, he's maybe the fifth linebacker at best, sixth. And we have him starting. That should say something. We also go down the list, and it's fine and funny because they all came from the same dra- draft class. Carter Coughlin. Carter Coughlin has been a disappearance. Carter Coughlin has been nothing. Carter Coughlin has just, you know, he's ha- he had that one big game in Seattle. He had sh- he shined. He had moments. But then at the end of the day, he did nothing. And hopefully with the new coaching staff, he can find – something new he can find something that we can we you know we 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 can just look back at these last two seasons for him and go get out that neuralizer and just take care of it for carter coughlin the same goes with oh shane can you see oh shane zimenez number 53 the linebacker at old dominion who had 10 and a half sacks his last season in old dominion 6'4 254 pounds 25 years old outside of that first year has done nothing we always knew O'Shane was going to be a project. We always knew that because of the fact that he really only had one move coming out of Old Dominion. You hoped the coaching staff was going to coach him up and turn him around and move forward and teach him something. Well, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't really learned anything in the last couple of years. <laughs> so, I mean, he, he's, got to, he's got to step it up big time or he's not even going to make it out of training camp. You got number 54 on this roster. Of course, it's Blake Martinez, the injured linebacker. Uh, fair or unfair that he's going to be put on the big boy pants list. But the problem is he needs to step up. We need him to come back. It's it's Again, it's an injury situation. Fair or unfair. It's an injury situation. But we need him in that middle. We need him to, to find something. Two players right off the bat that really need to step up. It's going to be Mark Lewinsky and Shane Lemieux. I am not 100% sold on Glowinski. His his career was pedestrian at best until he ended up with the Colts. Almost got benched last year. I, we have to wait and see if he's a systems guy, if he's a solder guy. Lemieux, Lemieux is going into his third year out of Oregon. You know, he's he, he's he, he could be a road paver, but pass blocking is very sus- suspect at best. So we have to wait and see what he what he can do as well. Other person that's really got to step it up this year is going to be number 74, Matt from Connecticut. 6'7", 318 pounds out of Connecticut. Of course, I just said that going into his third season. Seems like Matt's been here forever. He is another guy that when I did my draft recap video after he was drafted, I said project guy could take three to four seasons before he even becomes a starter and maybe not even a quality starter. And people are like, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, evidently I did. Because you can't go from Connecticut to the NFL with this lack of experience. 
And I said he has a slight frame. I didn't see him adding, but he added bulk, but he's not adding weight. He's up to 318 pounds. And I said, he's going to need, if he's going to play the tackle, tackle position, he's needs going to put on, he's going to need to put on some strength and some weight, put on the strength, but hurt his back. This is going to have to be the year for Matt, because you know what? We can't keep carrying projects on this roster. The other player that I'm concerned that has got to turn up his big boy pants is going to be John Feliciano. Eighth year out of Miami, six full, 325 pounds. Has been injured the last two seasons off and on. It has 300 snaps under his belt at center. Is going to come in and anchor the line. If that is not a, a pause for concern, I, I, I don't know what else. I don't know what else is. Because honestly, there's really no other center on the roster. And if he fails. That's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man. We will be in some pretty deep doo-doo if he fails. If that if that experiment blows up, like we've we've had experiments blow up on us before, but if that experiment experiment blows up, we're in a lot of trouble. And Daniel Daniel Jones is in a lot of trouble. Also moving down the list, guys. And uh, let's see, you know who else got to step up finally? It's gonna have to be David Sills the fifth. Oh, David, another guy that seems like he has been on this roster for an eon. An eon. And it's time. Welcome to the party, pal. He's got to join the party. <laughs> He's got to step it up. He's got to come in here and do something. He's got to prove something that he even deserves to be on the roster. Last couple players here. We have number 86. That's, of course, that's Darius Slayton, 6'1", 195-pound wide receiver out of Auburn going into his full season. He's we, We've done videos on Darius. We know what he's got to do. We know how he's got to step it up. Same thing with Kadarius Tony, number 89, the wide receiver out of Florida, 6 feet, 193 pounds. Hopefully he can, he can learn his route running and figure out something. I was going to throw Smith the linebacker here, 6'7", 245 pounds out of Northern Iowa. He's in his second year off the injury season, but you know what? I'm going to give him, he's coming off an injury season. So I'm going to give him a break this year because I, I don't think it, I don't think it's fair to when you, when you basically, when you barely hit the field to, 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 to say it's a make or break time, but we're, we're, we're going to have to, um, we're, we're, we're going to give it, we're going to give him a break. And dropping down the list, you know, I was going to have Dexter Lawrence, but we'll see what Dexter Lawrence does. But the last player, number 99, who has to step it up big time and get his big boy pants on. King of the almost sack. Well, that's right. It's Leonard Williams. Leonard Williams got $4,678,000 over three years to play for this team. He reverted back to the king of the almost sack because of the fact that we say in his prime year, two years ago, it was very simple to see that most of his sacks and we broke them down a couple of weeks, a couple of geez, like a year ago now and showed that the majority of his sacks were what they referred to as coverage sacks. And when the secondary did not play well, like they didn't at times last year, it showed Leonard Williams looked frustrated Leonard Williams, like I said, had more assists than he did solo tackles because he was like what I like to refer to as a pile honor. It's a very simple stat. When you when you jump on the pile, you are credit with an assist, and that's what Leonard Williams does quite a bit throughout his career. So he's going to have to step it up. He's going to have to be the linchpin. He's going to have to be the anchor. He's going to have to be the mentor to Aziz Ojolari, to Kayvon Thibodeau, to Quincy Roche. He's going to have to do all those things. Can he? Will he? I don't know, to be honest. But you know what? It's time for the big boy pants. It's time to step it up, Leonard. And you are the king of... I can, you can't keep me cooped up in here, okay? I am a peacock. You gotta let me fly. You gotta fly, Leonard. You have to fly. Because if you don't, we're paying you a bazillion dollars for nothing. And I, and I, I, can't, I can't have that. I can't, de- I, can't, I, can't, I can't deal with that. I can't think that you want to go out there and get paid like Aaron Donald, but you're going to play like Ronald McDonald. It's just not, it's just not fair to the giants. It's just not fair to the team. You, if you have another, another season, like you did last year, you need to give back some of that money. You need to turn around to the giants and go, you know what? I'm sorry. I suck. Here you go. Take some of this, take some of this money back. Because I didn't have my big boy pants on. 
And that's the way we need to look at this. And that's the way we should look at it. And these, there was more guys that on this roster than I thought that had to. Are you a big man? What? Huh? I'm talking to you. What? You wake up in the morning, you say, I put on my big boy pants. Look, I'm wearing a belt. I got big boy pants on. That had to have their big boy pants on. I thought it would be a big, I thought there'd be a large amount of players, but I didn't think it'd be this large of an amount. We got an announcement coming up, hopefully in the next couple of weeks about the, uh, uh, the August 21st uh, Giants home preseason game. We may have a, we may, we may have a, uh, I don't know. We may, we may, have, it's, I think, I personally think it's pretty exciting news, but we, you know, some people might not think it's that exciting, but I think it's personally exciting. So hopefully we're, we're, we're wrapping up the final details for this big announcement. We're going to do a live stream when it happens. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you like, if you subscribe, if you ring that button, that'd be awesome.